that's, that's coming at us that will help to kind of lay thoughts of desperation and despair on us. And it's not to say that this isn't a trying time. Even on uh, Thursday night, we talked about how that Paul said in Timothy, when we wrote to him, he said um, perilous times would come. And uh, we're in perilous times. But you know what? Jesus even told his disciples, look, in the word, you're going to have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Amplified Bible says, I've deprived them of its power and its ability to harm you. See, these are the things that we want to stand on, and these are the things that we want to stand with. Amen? You know, again, as we pray, we want to pray the word. We don't want to pray the problem. And after we pray the word, then after that, except there be some other specifics that come out or come to our attention, we just want to thank God for the, we want to thank God for the manifestation of the answer. Amen? We want to thank God for the manifestation of the Answer. And you know what I was supposed to do? I was supposed to get you all to make sure that you all went over the, you know, the, the prerequisites and the, you know, the guidelines for online church, right? Um, you were to get out the bed, you know, kind of get dressed up, whatever dressed up is, you know what I'm saying? Get out the bed, kind of get dressed up, you know, uh, kind of get dressed up and. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, and then, you know, gather everybody and you all sit in front of, you know, your, your electronic device, you know, and, um, and, and, and oh, doing worship, you know, we wanted you to be a part of our worship, even though we couldn't see you, but I'm going to tell you doing the worship, I can see some of you all, you know, that's a part of Christian life. You just, just jumping around and, you know, doing what you do. But then remember now the end part of being a part of online churches is that while I'm teaching, you're supposed to be giving me amens. Amen. 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 You're, supposed, you're supposed to do what you do when you are at church. You know what I'm saying? You know, say that. You know, I like to say that. You know, say, say that. Amen. You know, you, you at your house. Amen. You know, uh, you know, get into it. Open up the Bible and say, oh yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. That's the scripture I'm going to use this week. Amen. So I want us to make sure that, you know, that we... You know, we are the church, but you know, let's have this worship experience and make it a full blast for it. Amen. 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 Let the children know in your house that uh that you you know, you enjoy the Lord. How about that? Oh, really? Amen. Amen. Well, you know, okay, again, so now since I've gotten you all together and got you all robbed up, you know, we're supposed to be having church, all right? Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, having that worship experience because we're the church, right? Um, I want to um, call to your attention a couple of scriptures, and I want to make sure that I give you um, some, some, some weapons, amen, that you'll be able to fight with, amen. Uh, um, what was it? I think it was Thursday night. I told you all that faith needs knowledge. Right? Faith needs knowledge. Um, right after our service on Thursday, um, um, Brother Kendrick, Minister Kendrick, walked up to me and he told me about a situation that happened just on uh, Thursday. And he said that how that, uh, 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 you know, something came up and somebody said something. And he said right away when he heard it, he felt himself kind of get a certain way. But then right away he heard, whose report would you believe? And I told him, see, that's it. Faith needs knowledge. It is when we are able to have a word for the thought, I have the word for the contradiction of what we believe, that we can say that we stand in faith. Yeah. Amen? That's why faith needs knowledge. That right at the time that we, um, you know, have a situation or circumstances, a circumstance that come against us, that that word that you place on the inside of you, that it wells up without you even thinking about it. I mean, he heard what he heard, and he said just right away he heard, whose report would you believe? This is what we want. This is what we need in this day and in this hour. We need the word to rise up and to rise up in faith. Amen. So that what we pray we will see the manifestation of. I know you know that, you know, you know, we, you know, we can kind of get, you know, kind of um, out there with it. We'll pray and then something will come up and then our words are not coming in line with what we just prayed. Well, we don't want to nullify our prayer. So that's why our faith needs knowledge. And you ask, what is faith? I'm, I'm not talking about, a, you know, a religion. I'm not talking about, a, 
you know, a certain denomination of belief. But what is faith? Hebrews 11 and one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Inside of that passage of scripture, it also says that the worlds were framed. Right. Am I telling the truth? Yes. yes. I didn't hear the amen. 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 Okay. Anybody looking? Do anybody have their little hands? I'm doing this. Y'all, y'all, y'all looking? Are you waving their hands yet? Or do I, I, yes. do I have to do a spin? Do I? Cause baby, I spin. Do I need to do a? I see my waves. Hands up. Hands up. I see waves. My hands up. Yes. All right. Don't yes. need more hands up. Cause look. Yes. Worlds are framed by the word. Yes. And if God framed the world by yes. His words. And we are created in his image and in his likeness. Yes, hey, we should be framing our world with our words. Yes. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you something. It can't be any more chaotic than what God walked up on that day when he looked at the earth. After the scripture says, Genesis 1 and 1, it says, and God created the heavens and the earth. And then we look at verse 2 and it says, it was void. And y'all, chaotic, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, if he took his words and said, let there be. It's the same thing he expects us to do right now. He expects us to do whatever is trying to make changes in our world that we take the word of God and we do what he did. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to write this down if you're writing. Uh, make sure you write down Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. I want you to write this, what is faith? One thing faith is, it is a spiritual force. Thank you, Lord. It's a spiritual yes, force. It Let me tell you something. Faith is something that can, that's to be reckoned with, yeah. all right? It is, it, it, it is what God used, again, to frame the world. Yeah. Okay, so you got that. Faith is a, a spiritual force. Number two, let me tell you something. Faith is God's creative power. Yeah. Amen? Did you hear that? Faith is a spiritual force, force and faith is God's creative power. Yeah. And then in C, our number three if or if you if how do you know how way you're you're kind of lettering it or you're placing it then the third thing is faith is the substance of things hoped for Come amen on. anything that you find yourself um, hoping for or that you're desiring only faith can bring that thing into manifestation because if you're hoping for it that means that you don't have it now that's right right that's it's right. not manifested now but faith will put substance to that thing yes, that until the manifestations manifestation come, you can hold on to it, amen? amen? And you can believe God for it. Glory to God. Amen. I'm running fast now, y'all. All right. Faith, I, I just told you what faith is, right? Yes. Well, let me tell you, there's an enemy to our faith. Mm. And I know you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Some of some some of you know, some of us have been battling with that enemy. Mm. And that enemy to our faith is fear. Right. Huh? Mm. What is fear? Can I tell you that fear is a spiritual force also? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Fear is a spiritual force. Now, I want to give you these passages of scripture in Mark 4, 37 and 41. It's a passage of scripture where Jesus, you know, uh, uh, he, he was talking to his uh, disciples. You know, this is right after the infamous um, uh, tree. Right when he had cursed the tree, and the disciples, they, uh, you know what, what they, you know, they passed back, and they told him that the tree was was dead. Right, and so in Mark four thirty seven and forty one, you know, Jesus started talking to them about this force of fear. But then I want you to also note Matthew um, fourteen and thirty. And then 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I love to give scripture because like I said before, you know, we can throw a lot of, you know, like kind of little things about, you know, won't he do it? And, uh, uh, you know, some of the other things that we say, but I'm telling you, the only thing that's going to hold us during tough times is what the word of God says. Amen. 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 So fear is a spiritual force, but I also want you to know that it is also Satan's destructive power. Yes. Yes. In Isaiah 54 and 14, I want you um, to look at that. Uh, somebody took my iPad. I'm sorry, y'all, that I can't read them for you, but let me just give you, let me just give you the references on them, okay? Um, uh, uh, fear is uh, Satan's destructive power. And then the third thing is, is fear is the substance of things not desired. 
Now remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. But fear is the substance of things not desired. You'll find that in Matthew 14 and 30. Fear was the substance of Peter's undesirable failure. It was fear. You know, during our 21 days of prayer and fasting, it, man, we just had moments in the presence of God. And um, one of the Saturdays that uh, we were here, you know, Minister Sherman, you know, we just had a couple, just people that began to hear, you know, um, the voice of God and just began to share with us and encourage us. And on that Saturday, you know, Minister Sherman, he brought up uh, this passage of scripture, you know, about the transfiguration of Jesus. But when we looked before that whole transfiguration, you know, um, occurred, Jesus had started telling his disciples about his departure. Now, let me tell you something. When you've been with somebody as supernatural as Jesus mm -hmm. and somebody as influential as Jesus, you don't want that person to leave you. Amen. Amen. Any hands raised? Yes. Let them know where you going. And especially when you think, my man, you ain't been with me for years. You know what I'm saying? And so Jesus started telling them about that he was going to lead them, right? And so he had already, he had already experienced the power of being able to heal the sick and, you know, um, cast out demons. But when Jesus started talking about that he was going to leave them, you know, that, that wasn't sitting well with them. You know, they didn't, they, they, that, was, that just wasn't working really well with them. And so the scripture says that he began to tell them about he was leaving and then um, he um, departed to go up to, you know, uh, the mountain or to go away. And he took Peter, James, and John, right? Well, while he was there, you know, this daddy, I'm telling you, let me tell you something. When you're talking about parents and you're talking about their kids, even when you can't believe, uh, you know, don't, you kind of waver with your faith about yourself when it comes to your children. Uh, or, you know, a, a, a loved one, it's like you, you try to find it. You try to find what you need to be able to believe for them, right? Mm -hmm. And so this, this dad, you know, when Jesus uh, and the disciples, you know, they came down, um, they heard a lot of commotion. And, and when Jesus walked up, he was like, what's going on? And the daddy, you know, his, his heart was just broken. And he walked up to Jesus and he said, my son. And he gave them a whole lowdown about what happens to his son. And he said, I brought him to your disciples. The passage of scripture says, said that they couldn't, and they couldn't, and they couldn't, and they couldn't heal him. Well, um, I was reading something that um, Charles Capp said, and he said, it, it wasn't that they couldn't, they wouldn't. Because you see, they were the same ones that had before saw demons cast it out, right? Man, they came back to Jesus one time and they were so excited. They said, Woo -hoo, yeah, we've been casting out demons and this been happening. And Jesus said, yeah, mm -hmm, y'all getting all excited about that, but let me tell you what I saw. I saw Satan kicked out of it, right? Y'all seen what's happening with his little imps, but I'm telling you, I saw him kicked out, right? So, uh, which means he is a defeated Oh, yeah. right? Well, child, let me tell you, um, when, when Jesus looked at the guy and he told the daddy, he said, what he, well, he directed it toward the disciples. He said, um, you know, how long do I have to deal with you? What's going on with your unbelief, right? Mm -hmm. Your unbelief. Mm -hmm. You know, I told them that night that when I went to study that, um, I could see how that, Jesus telling them that he was leaving, and then them having to deal with, you know how you, 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 you almost lose heart and you lose hope Amen. when you think your source. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you get turned around. Yes, yes. I don't know, you know, if somebody's sitting out there because of what's going on. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. What's going on with this virus? And then it's not just the virus, but all the things that that's connected to yeah. it. Yeah. That before this, you know, you would, yeah, give me Jesus. Yeah. And you were like, oh, yeah, I believe that he'll do anything. Uh -huh. But then I don't know if you got a good report, and maybe your heart is feeling kind of like these disciples. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I was a believer before, but not right now. I just feel like, 
Like I'm hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah. The same faith. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. The same faith that helped you before. Yeah. That's right. Will be the same faith that will help you now. Oh, yeah. And it. can I tell you that even in this moment and in this hour, if we build ourselves up Come on. in the word of God, in the word. that you will increase yeah. in faith yeah. to be able to withstand whatever is coming. Yes. And look, I told you all, well, I don't know if you all were here, but you know a couple of these people that uh, on uh, Thursday night that look, everything answers to faith. Yes. Yes. yes, Lord. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Any hands raised? Yeah. Yeah. Everything yes. answers to faith. Yeah. But can I tell you, faith answers to God. Yes, yes. Lord. Everything answers to faith, and faith answers to God. Yeah. When you bring faith to God, let me tell you, this um, dad, when, you know, he started telling Jesus, and man, his daddy looked at Jesus, and he said, um, I believe. That's why I thought to your disciples, I believe. That's right. But then this is what he said. I believe, but even if right now I don't, it don't look like I'm believing. Please help my unbelief. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm still not backing down. I want this for my baby. I want this for my son. Come on, man. You know, it, it, I, I think I'm believing. Yeah. I, I think I'm believing. Yeah. But I'm sure not going to back out. Yeah. You the one. So I believe. But if I don't, right. help oh, my yeah. unbelief. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Come on. Look, let me tell you when tough times come, yeah. when tough times yes. come, you can go to God and say, Look, Lord, yes. I really feel like I'm believing. Yeah. But if there is something that's happening that's oh, doing that, I done said that I done messed up. I, yes. I believe, but look, hey, I, help my help my unbelief. Yes. Yes. Whatever I may be, I trust you. Yes, yes. Father. Yes, and you are. Yes. A very present help. Yes. Yes. Even yes. in my moments when I'm struggling with my faith, oh, yes. give me a word. Yes. Send me a word. That's what he's doing today. He's sending yes. me a word. Yes. Yes. He's sending me a word to let you know that, look, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Yes. He hasn't changed his mind, and don't you change your mind. Yes. Amen? Let me tell you, you got all kind of reports that's coming down the pipe. It's coming down the line. But let me tell you, we're going to have to stand the way they stood in Hebrews 11. We're going to be the heroes of faith right here, right now. Yes. Amen. We're yes. going to be the heroes yes. of faith right here, right now. Yes. You know, everybody, you know, what's good reading that story about Esther. And everybody claiming, oh, I'm, I, you know, for such a time as this. Well, that's such a time as this right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. This is a such a time as this. Yes, it is. Huh? This, yeah. this is it right here, guys. Yeah. This is when we need to rise up Hallelujah. and be who we say or who God says yeah. that we are. And we cannot let fear, we cannot let fear be, be the substance of our undesired failure. Amen. We can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. So how does our faith work? How does our faith work? Faith cometh by hearing the word. In Romans 8, now take note of these scriptures now. Romans 8, uh, Romans 10, 8 through 17, it talks about how faith cometh by hearing. Amen? And then in Proverbs 4, um, 20 through 22, also lets us know how that the word of God is exactly what we need to stand in faith. Again, I am so thankful to God for all of the prayer that's going on um, in the world. Not only, you know, just about the virus, but pray for our leaders. We have to pray for our leaders, you all. We have to pray for our leaders. This is not a time for us to, you know, be uh, this or that, don't like this, don't like that. Let me tell you, in Timothy, Paul admonished that we should pray for the leadership over us. And why should we do that? So that we can live a quiet and peaceful life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A quiet and peaceful right. life. Amen. We need it to be quiet and peaceful life. Right. Yes. Amen. Oh, <laughs> That's what we need right now. Amen. Amen. You know, um, we need a quiet and peaceful life. Right. So we need those people that are in leadership to be able to make right decisions. And we also need to pray for leadership, not only um, uh, uh, national and international level, we need to pray for leadership locally. Amen? Yes. So just every spectrum of leadership, we need to pray. Yeah. We, we, we need to pray. And then we need to pray for families. We need to pray, you know, for um, 
you know, these people who have businesses, you know, because this is this is a real time for them. And don't talk about our, our the medical teams, yeah. you know, that that that's that's trying to help and aid and do what they're supposed to do, and then still they have to go home to their families right. Right. after treating. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Those people need our prayers, amen. So if once you've prayed about the virus and thank God that it doesn't come near your dwelling. Right? right, and that uh, you pray that every germ and every virus that try to touch your body dies instantly. Yeah. Well, then now let's pray for the other people that that need our prayers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So okay, so now and faith is developed through our uh, meditating and acting on the word. Amen. Faith is developed through meditating and acting on the word. Our capacity for more faith or to increase in faith or to develop in faith it is vitally important um, write this down james 1 and 22 and then james 2 17 and 4. i want you to know that your faith is applied by speaking of things that are not as though speaking of things that are not as though they were what did i say Faith is applied by speaking of things that are not as though they were. You'll find that in Romans 4, 16 and 17. And I want you to know that Jesus is the author and the developer of our faith. Amen? You know, the scripture says that our faith worketh by love. Mm -hmm. So if our faith worketh by love, then what does fear worketh by? Mm -hmm. That's important because, you know, sometimes we don't even know how, uh, uh, you know, to counter, to, to bring that counter attack. Um, I told my class on Monday night that I don't know if everybody know it, but every thought that we have isn't an original thought until we take it. Right. That's why Jesus said, take no thought. Right. Right. So if thoughts can come to me and they're not original thoughts, then I need to know how to deal with them. That's right. You have 30 seconds. That's how. 30 seconds to deal with a thought. And you can't wait until 25, 26, 27, 28. You have 30 seconds to deal with the thought. If you have not dealt with that thought in 30 seconds, now you're going to have to deal with the thought and the deal with it. Mm, amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Lord. See, Minister Kendrick, when he was talking to me Thursday, whatever it was that happened, the thought came first. If he wouldn't have had a word that could come up and rise up and say, but whose report will you believe? Yeah. Honey, if that 30 seconds would have passed and he then would have had to deal with the thought and the feelings mm. that that thought was trying to bring, which was fear. Yes, Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. Then, now we're dealing with the thought and the feelings. I have a real big fight now. Yeah. Amen. Be very vigilant yeah. about your thoughts yeah. in this hour. Mm -hmm. Be very vigilant about how you hear. You know, Jesus told them, be careful how you hear. Be very vigilant about what you allow to go into your eyes, into your ears, and come out of your mouth. Be very vigilant because once we pray and we believe God for, um, you know, uh, turn around and we, we, we can't use our mouths and start saying, I don't know what's going on. You can't say things like, you know, I, I, I just feel like the, you know, my life is over. That, you know, just my world is over. Even if the feeling is something that you find yourself having, don't let it come out of your mouth. That's right. Amen. Don't allow it to come out of your mouth. Yes, Amen. Yes, Go straight to the word of God. Hallelujah. Go straight into worship. Go straight into whatever it is to bring you out of yes. that feeling. Come on. Y'all know what we do when we're in a feeling and we're trying to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> or trying to get in it. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> there are things that we can do, but we need to do that in this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith. Just like um, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, fear works or comes by hearing the word of the world. Mm. 
everything that faith is, fear tries to counter it. Yeah. That's <laughs> in Matthew 14 and 30, Luke 21 and 26, and then Mark 4 and 19, we have the proof and the evidence how fear works. Fear works and it comes by hearing the word of the world. And guess what? Fear is just like faith. Fear is now. Yeah. Fear don't wait till tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. Scripture says now faith. That's right. But fear tries to tries to work in the dimension mm -hmm. of now. Yeah. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Fear don't say, think this stuff. Feel this feeling, I'll come back tomorrow and get it. Yeah. Come on, yeah. no, yeah. no, yeah. oh no. no. When I get you to meditate on what I just right. said, right. I'm yelling in and out. I'm yeah. tearing you up right now. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and guess what else I'm doing? I'm giving you a counter yeah. of what you need to do. That's right. Because it's all over. I hope it's down. Yeah. Right? Man. <sighs> That's Lord. That's Lord. That's Lord. Fear is developed through meditating right. and acting on Satan's lies. <laughs> you know, some people say, I don't believe in the devil. Whatever you believe in, it's trying to tear you up. Yeah. yeah. All right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, 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 whatever it is, the, the universe is trying to take you up. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so, acting on the lies, that's what's developing our fear, right? Mm -hmm. Fear is applied by speaking of things that are not. Now, you remember faith is speaking of the things that are not as though they are. Fear does the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Child, I'm telling you, fear be trying to hide. Fear is applied by speaking of things that are not mm -hmm. as though they are. Right. Yeah. What is fear? False evidence appearing right. real. Yeah. So what is fear doing? It's trying to get me to talk about things that are not right. as though they are. Yeah. Fear is trying to get you to walk around and say, I'm dying. You ain't dying. Right. Amen. It's trying to get you to talk about things that are not. Yes. As though they are. Yes, Lord. It's not what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say that. Right. I'm not going to receive that. Mm -hmm. I believe what the word of God says. Oh, Y'all, I'm winding this up right now. Amen. Oh, now um, yeah, look. And I want you to know, fear demands compromise. Mm -hmm. It demands. Oh, it demands. Wow. Fear demands compromise. Yeah. You, you, you can't oper operate fear and, and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the right thing. Uh-uh. Fear is demanding compromise. It wants you to compromise the word. It wants you to compromise um, what you believe. It wants you to compromise, uh, you, you know, your morals. Fear demands compromise. You wonder why people do the things that they do. It's because most times it's fear. He said, man, why you act like that? He said, fear, that fear that I had, it demanded a compromise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So many things, y'all, that we read and that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So many compromises are being made, mm -hmm. and they're being made because of fear. Yes, Lord, amen. You don't, we don't, want to allow fear to be a part of our lives. Because it'll make us compromise everything that we believe. Yeah. And then we'll look up, look up again and we'll have a faith failure yeah. the way Peter had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in the Bible we can talk about, all right? Hey, There's nobody in the Bible we can look down on. And look. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Do you understand? Yes. Why did he do that? Why did she? Every day you mess it up, you go, right. every day we yeah. mess it up. Listening to the same source and operating by the same. Mm -hmm. And that's fear. Mm -hmm. You know, fear was in the garden. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because he said, God wants you. Yeah. And then he said, and he's just, you know, he just don't want you to be like him. So you afraid that? Come on now. Mm -hmm. We don't have nothing to be afraid of. Fear becomes doubt and unbelief when it's acted upon. Don't act on it. And you won't have to. You won't have to deal with doubt and unbelief. Fear is not. Fear is not natural to the born again believer. That's not natural, you all. In First John four, fifteen through eighteen, it lets us know that fear is not natural. It's not natural to us as a born again believer. And fear has to be received before it can enter the heart and stop faith. Faith can only be stopped when fear is welcomed in yeah. or allowed to come 
in. But other than that, faith cannot be stopped. Hallelujah. The reference of scripture for that is Mark 4, 18 through 19, and then in Matthew 14 through 30. And then let me tell you this one, Luke 21, 26, and 34. You all, can I pray for you? Allow me to pray for you. Bow your heads, grab that baby hand. Grab that man hand. I'm going to leave it at that. Whoever's with you. Ooh, these people that sit around, they haven't found church today. Anyway, uh, grab that person's hand next to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity and the privilege, Father, to come into your presence. And Father, we know that these are troubled times, but again, you are a very present help in time of trouble. And Father, we just believe that on the other side of this is your glory. Can I get an amen? Amen. On the other side of this, Father, is your glory. We believe better days are ahead. Amen. Better days are ahead, Father. Amen. And that's what we speak out of our, out of our mouths. And so, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray for every heart that have heard your word. And I believe that the entrance of the word will give life and light unto them. And we thank you for the light and the life that we found inside of your word. And so, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I ask the Holy Spirit to go and to cause this word to stir up in the hearts of the people and cause them to know that you're there for them and that you will bring them through and you'll bring them out. And so, Father, we thank you for that. And as we said, Father, we pray for everyone, everyone, God, that's going through this hour, that they will find the peace that they need because we know father that the evidence of faith is rest and so father i speak rest about every person yes. in jesus name amen amen again we're so thankful to god that you came to be with us and to be a part of what we're doing um on today thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience and then i don't know maybe that's somebody that's listening and you haven't made jesus lord of your life let me tell you there is a privilege and there's an opportunity that comes by having jesus as lord of your life amen there's a privilege and there is a you know there's there's not there are opportunities there's blessings that come along with saying jesus come into my heart come into my life be lord of my life jesus I give the whole of my life to you, and I trust that, if, that you're going to make something good, something beautiful yeah. out of this life yeah. that's been given to me. I receive your now, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Today truly is a good day to have, amen. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, please contact us at the church. Yes. Message us. You know, we have some information. We always like to give new believers information about their walk. Because let me tell you something. You started a new walk now. And you're going to need people to help support and to help you. And we want to be that church yes. that will make yes. the difference. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hey, my yes. email corner, can y'all say amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. Yes. amen. Oh, let, the, let the people know that we're glad to have them with us uh, today. Um, we have some information, you know, for giving. We've already, I thank God for the faithful CLBC family, amen, that have already started their online giving and making sure that they are committed and that they will, um, you know, and they'll, 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 they'll just honor God with their seed, with their sowing, their honor God with their tithes and their offering, amen. And so if you wanna be a part of that, we call it an opportunity. If you wanna be a part of that opportunity, what you can give, you know, whether it's here or, you know, make sure you, you know, I don't know, maybe you already have a local church, please give to your local church. Um, and I'm not saying that as a crybaby, uh, uh, you know, that if you don't do it, you know, God, the, the doors are gonna shut. I'm saying that, so all of those can stay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, and when I say that, I mean yours and mine. 
Yes, and, and, Lord. And, and you understand what I'm saying, you know? But now, if you don't have a local church, let me tell you, you need to um, stay online with us. Um, and um, we'll make sure that there's a good word for you. Um, and it'll be a blessing to you. So again, thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience with us. We thank God for you. And I pray that one day, if I've not met you, that I'll have the opportunity of meeting you. Um, you're always welcome here at Christian Life Bible Church as soon as they lift this, you know, this thing. Um, this um, it's not invasion, y'all. I gotta watch my words. <laughs> this uh, inclusion. Shut no down. Ava. So, what is it, y'all? Shut down. What is it? A shutdown? This shut. This shutdown. I don't think that's what it's called, people. But <laughs> isolation. Social distancing. Social distancing. Social, yeah. Social, what is it called? Social distancing. Our social, as soon as they, you know, get <laughs> Wait, what is the other thing? He said, don't now. listen to <laughs> I told y'all, but this is the way it go all the time. Amen. This, this, this is what Christian life is all about, right? This is what Christian life is all about. Yeah. My online people, come on, lift your hands and let the people know. This is what we do. Amen. And we enjoy our while we do it. Amen. So, God bless you. I tell y'all how to give. Place it on it. Um, that if, if you text, 71441, right? Mm -hmm. And in a message, write CLBC Giving. It'll pop up and you just follow the, uh, the instructions. Um, you can also go um, on our CLBC page, um, our Facebook page, and where it says Use App. Um, and then I think there's some other information, our mobile site. Um, there's also information on that if you just kind of scroll down you'll be able to see that information, all right? And guess what? You make sure you speak to that seat and you tell it to go oh, and grow. Bro. And you let it know you expect to see it really soon. Really soon, amen. And you're blessed to be a blessing, amen? Yeah. So thank God for you all today, amen. I don't know why we're not even kind of back. Pastor Abel, uh, you said the word you're looking for is quarantine. That is the word. See, Danielle on it, she on it, child. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. There are others that's letting me know they said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this the way it happens. This is what happens at Christian life. Amen. Amen. Um, so it's quarantine, you all. As soon as we get out of this quarantine. <laughs> Did I say it right now, Mr. Jason? No, no, I have a scar. I don't like it. Evan? Evan's over there laughing too hard. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. So we better get out of here before we start our crazy. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.